right, my name is Matt Lanchette. I'm with Anderson Vision. I'm here today with the star of The Portrait, uh, Natalie cordova Butley. Natalie, it's so lovely to have you today. Thank you, Matt. Nice to meet you. Thank you for having me. Um, so The Portrait is about... It's a very strange and rather interesting little picture. Um, what drew you to uh, making it? Um, a couple of things. Um you know, it was 2021. Grief was a big part of that year for the whole world since we were in the middle of the pandemic and everyone had lost someone or known someone that had lost someone. Grief was something I was uh, dealing with myself personally because I had lost three of the beings I love most in this world. Um, and I was dealing with that kind of profound grief for the first time in my life as an adult and this movie was offered to me and um and it interests me the analysis of um what grief can do to us the impact it has also the idea that this was a psychological thriller and i think grief is in itself a um suspenseful emotion um it's suspenseful because at times you'll call out the person's name that is dead and they won't answer. So there's this lingering suspense of waiting for that laughter to come and you never hear it again. Or when you come into the house and you lock the door, them saying I'm home and that doesn't happen. It's th th there's this uh, stretching of time when it, when grief is around you. And I found it very interesting that this movie to me was about a woman going through grief and the impact it's having on her whilst being a psychological thriller and suspenseful film. And I thought that worked so well with the subject. So that was one uh, profound um, reason as to why it was interesting to me, but also um, the fact that I had never carried a whole film in my life. Um, I've done theater where I've carried, I've done uh, TV where I've been one of the lead uh, characters in an entourage, but um, but I had never carried almost every frame of a film. And I found that to be a challenge I wanted to see if I could do and to live through. Um, yeah. It felt like you were living through that grief, not quite that grief again, but sort of a different sort of telling of that grief a different sort of story with that grief. Well, of course, as an actor, you know, if if you're telling a story or portraying a character that has trauma, it doesn't mean that the trauma they're experiencing is your same trauma, but you use your trauma to understand the trauma of others. It's empathetic work, you know, it's it's digging into your own sli life to find and analyze the life of others. And, and a lot of the time it's, they have completely different perspectives of life than you may have or religion or culture or ways of seeing the world, but you have to go through you to get to them for sure. Was it, what, was there a particular, when you got this script, was there a particular scene or a moment or character, you know, line of dialogue? Was there something that made you want to go, yes, I really want to do this aside from, the, the the resonating the story resonating with you so strongly um i guess the final scene which i won't uh spoil it for people but that final scene is um again um it made me uh want to dive into a another analysis of character that i or or story that i wanted it to work on when it came to this was I believe that women have an instinct of uh, sacrifice. We're, we're naturally wired to sacrifice ourselves um, for those we love. If you think of, um, there's no minority in this world that has been oppressed for longer than women have. No minority whatsoever, because before uh, religion started anything, women were already being put down. Um, and so I think it's 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 an instinct that we naturally have that have, has been in some way turned against us. And there's a lot of that subject in the film, uh, violence against women. But the, the final scene is this combination of killing for, uh, killing for love, sacrificing 
yourself and another for love. And it's so uh, maternal and female. So that final scene really uh, drew me to this. Is there any point in this world that ending a life is a, is a work of kindness or the, the you know, um, so that was that final scene was very interesting to me because of that. That to explore that um, amount of love that you can have some, for someone, where you can understand that they would be happier dead than in the situation they're in. Was it was it difficult trying to for most of the movie sort of play against a scene partner who doesn't have any dialogue pretty much you know i mean it's wonderful <laughs> i mean you were you were probably you were basically carrying the whole thing you were you know number one on the call sheet all that sort of thing it, it tends to put a different sort of pressure on you i'm sure definitely puts pressure on you but it was a pressure again like i answered er earlier a challenge right. of pressure i wanted to sustain i'm a ex-classical dancer so pressure and challenge is all we are. We, we break our bones every day. So I have that kind of soldier mentality that classical dancers have within. I love, I love when things get so hard that you almost want to break. I, I love that kind of feeling. Um, so that was another definite. Um, and one to, thing I, and one thing I know oh, the, the acting with Ryan, sorry. Um, no, it's fine. It's fine. There's Go no, ahead. you know, there's a lot of actors that have said this and I agree. I would love to act without words. It's I think what drew Ryan to this role too. There's a lot to be said about acting just with your eyes and your face. It's very powerful. And Ryan's a superb actor and a wonderful human being. So it was wonderful to act with him and be able to communicate beyond words to start to read each other beyond words. And I think that's what Alex and Sophia would have had. So it was beautiful. And I did, I did, you mentioned how female this, how feminine this sort of story is. And I did notice that the majority of the cast are women. Do you feel like that, you know, there was a very strong sense of that on set, especially with, you know, Virginia Madsen and. Um, I can't say that there was that sense for me. It, it was what, what I love about set, sets is that everything that is of identity politics in this world disappears on a set. I don't become your friend because you're of a race or a religion. I'm not close to you because you're famous or not, which is, is already how I am. But um, but sets have that about them. You, you get naked before you enter a set and you enter only as an artist. And I love that about, uh, about my line of work. <laughs> and I, I love, yeah, there, there were a lot of women working on that set and I love it because, you know, I'm a woman and, we deserve much more opportunities. It's just the right thing to do. But when I'm in, on set, those labels matter zero to me. Once we're in there, everyone is as important to me as anyone else, no matter your position on the production, where you come from, who you are. It, it disappears for everyone. It definitely disappears for me in my life. But on set, it just we're just artists. We're just kids again creating and, and dreaming and i think that's what makes us addicted to this work a lot of the time is and what makes leaving a set one of the most heartbreaking things you'll ever go through because you know you might never see these people again and they mean so much you know for a fact i know there is absolutely no question that on my final breath those people will cross my mind all those sets that i was part of will cross my mind so so it's a very interesting um, thing to live through. And very is, is there something that you took with you? I don't mean physical. I mean a sense from this set that you think you'll carry with you. Um, yeah, I, um, lessons galore. I took physical things too, but, you know, um, just a fulfillment of self, of 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 um having lived a dream of having gotten this enormous opportunity that such few people get um i guess what i take the most from experiences like this is a profound sense of gratitude i 
you know, my position is rare and I'm very grateful for it. And I think you do a fantastic job with it. I mean, you, you're, you're justified for being proud of this work. I could, I would never have guessed that this was your first time leaving because you were so short in your work. Although I would, I was able to tell you were classically trained as a dancer. There was all that that movement. It was, it was you can't miss it. You did an absolutely fantastic job with this really difficult part. Thank what, you, Matt. You have no idea what that means to me. Thank you very much. I'm just one person, so I hope more people get to say that sort of thing. Um, what? Who are you hoping? What? What are you hoping resonates most with people, and who do you most hope gets to see the portrait? Um, well, I always hope that the filmmakers that I want to work with watch my work. So hopefully they'll go, damn, that girl's good or I don't like her or I don't know, make an impression on them so I can hopefully someday work with them. Um, of course you always wish that, but, um, I let go of my stuff after it's done. Um, it's got, it's, it was never ours really it's got its own life and it's got its own growth it's like a child that you let go of you got to give it complete freedom for it to be itself so um I, I just hope that if it does anything this film that it resembles that there can be craft and quality and entertainment that you can be entertained um and still be moved and still question yourself and still be challenged on your ideas that it's not just bubble gum, sugar candy for our brain, which I feel like this industry has gotten filled with. Um, so it's become a lot about the corporations making money and no matter the art or the craft. And I think it's destroying our art and our craft. And so I hope that what I what we were able to accomplish with this film was look, you can have fun, you can actually be entertained, and then when you see the credits go, oh, I've got some questions about life. This and and, and this moved me, or or it resembled something about me, or I don't know that it goes deeper than just uh, brain candy, which is what I think a lot of what the strike we were fighting for is in its depth. It's far more than just brain candy, you know. It's 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 food to nourish the soul, I guess, creatively. Oh, thank you, thank you so much. And I guess also that you know, go support independent films. Of course. One one of my favorite uh, poems by one of my favorite poets says, uh, "You wonder where the real wise, real ones are. What cave is hiding them? While the." <laughs> Bow, but while the talent less bowed to accolades. And I think we need to be more careful with what we have uplift in this world. There are Mozarts aren't they, out there that we're not taking the time to look for. There are independent uh, filmmakers out there, women, minorities that are incredible, and we're not taking the time to not just uplift them, to look for them, to find them so we can all uh, raise the stakes of our craft, give humanity better quality than what we're giving them, give humanity the kind of food we deserve to consume. And by food, I mean, in all aspects of life, what we consume, we deserve better. Um, so I hope, you know, that that that's one of the things for sure. That and that's, an incredibly, that's an incredibly important thing to have at the forefront of your mind. And I hope it's a message that you're able to get out there. If, I you know, hope so too. At least partly with this film, I hope. Um, yeah. Do you have anything that you're excited for coming up now that the strike is over? Um, I'm excited about uh, not not meaning not no not a project that I'm signed on. No, I'm excited. I want to create my own stuff. I, if if the strike taught me something, it's uh, that I do not want my career to depend on the minds of these corporations that have absolutely no knowledge of my art or my craft, which I actually went to school for. So um, I got to make my own stuff. We got to start, you know, f not relying of the on the on the 1% to feed this world. The 99 of us need to start making the stuff and not relying on them. There's really something to be said for art by the 99% rather than 1%. And I think, you know, as independent and as maybe 
small niche a picture as the portrait is i think mm-hmm. it helps you know i help i hope it helps you know broaden people's broadens people's minds broadens people's outlook on what you know a little portrait a little project uh can do you know on what it, how it can make you think how it can make you feel um it's a really lovely picture and thank uh, you and I'm, I'm glad that you were able to, you know, in the wake of the pandemic, in the wake of everything, make something that not only you could feel proud of, but spoke to you, you know, and hopefully speak to other people. I agree. Um, you know, I, I have to say this in every interview, but Portrait was made in 15 to 18 days uh, with an extremely low budget and in complete and order uh, disorder, meaning which is people don't understand filmmaking. And I think that's a part of why filmmaking is uh falling from its pedestal we didn't we haven't taken the time to educate people on what it takes to be a filmmaker in all the different jobs that filmmaking takes uh you know we i'm I'm gonna go there with this but we have kim kardashian defining acting now and i'm just gonna leave it at that and say we need to educate people on what filmmaking is because when a film is made in 15 days with no budget and in complete disorder it means we all have to be on our a game in on our on our a game for it to not be a terrible movie because that means that when you watch me running out of the house i filmed that days later from the scene prior to it that happens inside the house so if you watch me running out of the house in hysterics the thing that made me scared within the house, I might have shot it after the hysterics of running out. So the congruency that you have to keep the focus, the concentration on your own because you don't have 500 assistants behind you telling you how to act and how to do and doing all your stuff and you got to do it yourself. That's the stuff that I want young filmmakers out there to hear. I want them to know this was made in a way that you can make it. And, uh, and if you just do the work, truly the work with passion and love and not with only the desires of the consequences of the work, which can be fame, power, red carpets and beyond. When you do it for the work, you can accomplish it. And this is what we did with this little film. That's a wonderful way to just sum it up. Um, I, I, I'm not sure if it's out on video on demand just yet. Is it, is it already? It's going to be on Friday the 8th. Okay, uh, Friday the 8th. The portrait so is Friday. Going- this Friday, the portrait is going to be uh, out on video on demand uh, this Friday, the 8th, uh, December 8th. I have been speaking with the wonderful, talented uh, Natalie Cordova Buckley, whom I hope is going to be able to define acting a little bit more than Kim Kardashian. I sure hope so. I certainly hope so. Because if not, we just, you know, need to. Yes, yeah. Live of life. The portrait was directed by Simon Ross, starring. Uh, Natalie Cordova Buckley, Ryan Clanton, and uh, Virginia Madsen, and Mark Paul Gosselaar. And it is a fantastic picture. See it uh, if you're able to see it, pu- buy it, put it on demand if you're able to. And I've been Matt Blanchett from Anderson Vision, uh, speaking with someone whose views on arts are just really ought to be heard more. Absolutely fantastic speaking with you, Natalie. Thank you Thanks. so much for taking the time. Thank you. Thank you. You have a wonderful evening. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.